Hi, this is Chris Bosch, and you're listening to Animal House Radio with Aaron and Dr. Mike. February 6, 2009. My name is Aaron. Joined with Dr. Mike on another edition of Animal House Radio. Show is brought to you by Hills Pet Nutrition, makers of science, science, prescription, diet, pet food. Thank you very much to all the listeners. Great show tonight. Lauren Conrad from MTV's The Hills. I call her by her first name, Lauren, because we go way back. <laughs> Elsie and I, you know what? Tonight, I'm going to do something that, that I haven't done in a long time because, you know, I am, I do have a girlfriend. I'm going to ask Lauren Conrad out on a date. Wow. Will she say yes? Will she say no? Hmm. What, the, what are the repercussions from Deborah? We don't know. That's exactly what Deborah is getting, giving her thumbs up. <laughs> all three yes. of us, we're all going out. This is awesome. <laughs> Dr. Mike joins us in studio once again. Dr. Mike, you were away last week on a sabbatical. You were off in Regina. <laughs> That's exactly. I know you're doing your studying in Regina. It was uh, it was amazing. Uh, now the question is, did no, you, I was in Niagara Falls. Did you find what you were looking for? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Join with Joe once again, taping the show on YouTube and across the World Wide Web on www.animalhouseradio.com. If you got a question for Lauren Conrad, info at animalhouseradio.com. And when she's on the program at eight thirty, you're going to have your chance to talk to her. So you got to be really close. Tonight's show is an amazing show, and you get on the lines right now, 416-785-0680, 416-785-0680. Big thank you to Ronnie and the folks at Domino's Pizza at their location on Marley Avenue in Toronto, 358 Marley Avenue. Domino's Pizza, 416-785-5400. Call them and tell them Animal House Radio sent you, and... I don't know what they'll give you, but you know what? They'll They're, be happy. They'll give you amazing service because these yeah. guys are great. No, Tonight, great. I had their version of the cinnamon sticks. Amazing. The yeah. sauce that came with oh, it. God, oh, it reminds good. me of, of the stuff that you used to give me at your place. Well, the cinnamon sticks. <laughs> yes. Stuff? yes. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm good. talking about. It. You know, thank you so much to, to Ronnie and his staff over there. It makes everything, they, it makes everything taste even better. This is the best pizza possible. Our good friends at Domino's Pizza. And i got to welcome a brand new sponsor onto the program. You and I have been chit-chatting about them. Our good friend Eric from our, a great company, Tech Savvy. Now, i got to spell it out because some people may not know it. T-E-K-S-A-V-V-Y. And if you go to their website, dot com, you're going to find a ton of information about them. Now, get this. Now, this is the stuff that blows your mind because we're used to going with the other guys paying – you know, a, a lot of money for high-speed internet, a lot of money for home phone, a lot of money for a lot of things long distance. These guys at Tech Savvy, high-speed internet, 5 meg DSL internet service, twenty nine ninety five a month. That's good. And you know what else? No contract. You don't have to sign anything. And you know what else? They're 100% Canadian-owned. So like when you call them. up, you press zero, you speak to someone right there, 24-7, seven days a week, customer service. It's amazing. one 779 1575 one 779 1575 TechSavvy.com. Google them in. Great. You know, Tech Savvy powers Animal House Radio. So great company. We're going to be telling you more about them in the upcoming weeks. They're with us for the next year. And Eric is, is going to get me to have uh, Chuck Norris on the show. Chuck Norris rocks. He is amazing. Yes. So here's the big thing that we're going to do today. We're doing a little bit different. Tonight, we're not going to do any news. We're not going to do a nutritional nugget, even though I love Dr. Mike's nuggets. We're not doing them tonight. We're having a simple debate, and this is debate part one. The object of tonight's show, declawing part one, most controversial topic in, in the world, when it, I think, when it comes to animals other than puppy mills, is declawing of cats. Yep. And it is huge. It is. This is something that a lot of people didn't want to talk about. Mike and I have been waiting almost six months to talk about this, and tonight's the perfect opportunity. So do you have your cat declawed? What happened? We want to know everything that happened yep. with your Pros cat declawed. Pros and cons. What were you for? Or opinions. Why did you do it? We want to know your opinions. Are you against it? Are you for it? Are you one of those crazy hippies that just says no to everything because you're a crazy hippie? <laughs> I'm like Eric Cartman when it's with, with the hippies. You can't offend hippies. Okay? Because in a hippie's nature, they can't be offended. And that's the truth. That's the creed of being a hippie. 
You okay. can't be offended. You just say, oh, it's okay. I have okay. no opinion on that matter. But no, but it's true. Being, you know, you just you go away. So once again, 416-785-0680 is your cat declawed. <laughs> that was a, a sound of, of what the procedure used to be like 30 or 40 years ago, you know? So first of all, let's, let's ask the age-old question here. What is declawing? Because someone can say, hey, declawing, they don't, okay, what is declawing? Someone say, does that mean you take away their, uh, just their claws, is just their nails? But there's so much more to it. So what is declawing? Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to uh, have a little fun here and get you to actually read this and and tell me what decline really is in, in terms of... You know I can't read that, so why are you asking me? It's like my, I, I butchered my bar mitzvah the other day in Hebrew. I'm, I can't even say that in English. Come on, try. This is, how, that's, this is medically what we call decline. On why chest... Sonona? <laughs> On ectectomy. That was close. There we go. Very close. Yeah, you were, you were about a mile away. I'm pretty close. Anyway, that's what it's called. Um, essentially, yeah, decline is a procedure that is done under a general anesthetic to kitty cats... Um, I only do, uh, if I do, we do decline in our practice, I only do front claws, and I never do back claws, and we'll talk about why later. Um, See, I didn't know people did back claws. They do. I, I've had people request back claws, and I essentially send them elsewhere. Why do people request back claws? Well, because uh, 95% of cats scratch with their front claws, uh, but some cats uh, will do stuff with their back claws as well, and some people have very aggressive cats. And they essentially want to try to remove as many weapons as possible. And I stop and I think to myself, if you've got that bad a cat where you want to you remove want to its back claws, yeah, I, I it's... think we should just do something else personally. Yeah. You know, but of that, that's my two cents. So um, there's a sort of uh, my biggest frustration with decline when I talk to a lot of people is um, everybody treats it like a black and white disease. And I, uh, I'm a very gray on the topic. I can tell you a lot of reasons why you shouldn't have your cats declawed, and I give you a lot of reasons why you should have your de cats declawed. But you always have those opinions of people who are dead set against it, sure. and there's actually people who are dead set for it. And uh, I think there's arguments for both ways, but um, the problem is I find that a lot of people uh, either go one way or the other and never stop to realize all of the implications. We're going to talk about those tonight. I'm excited about that because there's a lot of things that people don't know. This is part one. Yeah. I mean, they make opinions about it uh, for and against, and they're making those opinions by stuff they've read on the internet or they hear or you know they don't have any concrete data for the length of time that i've been practicing i've seen the goods and the bads uh, about decline and i i want to openly discuss them so that people know you know what they need to look out for if you're thinking about getting your cat declawed i want you to know what you need to ask your veterinarian what you need to look out for so decline let's let's go back to your original question and it is actually removing the third phalanx which is the actual it's not the claw it's the it's the joint i'm sh i'm showing aaron but it's that first uh it's where the bone one meets bone two. It's kind of hard to describe without showing people, um, but it involves more than just the claw. It's the first bone that the claw is attached to. That's essentially it. So you're essentially, it, it's, it's somewhat of um, an amputation. Somewhat. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, you know, I... I the way I look, if I talk about it as an amputation and I think of some of the poor kitties that have got their tails caught in fan belts that we talked about one time on our winter topic, yeah. and I think about amputating tails, I would definitely think that in my head, just based on response uh, during surgery and everything else, that you know, amputating a leg or a tail is a, certainly a much more involved operation than a declaw. So, although yes, technically speaking, it is a amputation of the third digit, I, just, I, I think that's almost a little too heavy for in well, my thoughts anyway. well here's another question though i mean w can you declaw a, a dog uh we do do claws on dogs dogs who have do claws so which extra, are extra, extra claws, claws. Yeah. yeah it's similar to that yes okay if, if you're asking about that i don't know we don't declaw dogs but can um, it be done of course it can be done I mean, it can be done. There's a reason. W there's no real reason why you'd want to do that. I mean, I think that, um, you know, dogs never destroy things that much with their nails. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Some dogs do. No, of course. Some but, dogs are very hyper. But if they're doing it, they're, down, yeah. excuse me, they're doing it with all four limbs, not with just the front two. Yeah. Whereas well, cats, like I said, 95% of them, it's front legs.